This episode is brought to you by After the Power. With screen caps of over 160 actors in television and film, After the Power brings you up to speed with your favorite Power Rangers actors after they've left the spandex behind. Check it out at afterthepower.blogspot.com. pretty interesting actually I was um, I went to work for him I was his assistant uh, and we fell in love you know right away it's not the kind of thing that can happen too easily now in the workplace but in those days it was okay and um, we were connected on so many different levels back in those days he had an office on Ventura Boulevard and there was only about 40 people working for him and they were doing music for cartoons, predominantly. And these were back in the days of telefaxes. I mean, it was before faxes were actually... That was the new technology then. It was, it's weird to even say that. <clears throat> but um, he was doing a lot of cartoons from Japan and bringing the cartoons here and creating, creating new storylines and obviously new music. And it was back in those days that in one of the trips to Japan, he had discovered... Jew Ranger, Power Rangers. So this this goes back a long ways. I was his assistant, and then I segued into, uh, we opened a toy division, because for a while Saban Entertainment was going to try to create our own toy lines. And that lasted for oh, about a, I think the division was open for a couple of years. But I stayed working for him that way for about a year, and then we decided it was better. It's just was better for me to be doing something outside of the company for a while because we were getting ready to have children. We had two kids, two more kids together. And uh, so I opened a separate business. I opened a, a children's clothing store, actually. But when I say I was a writer, I started writing uh, before I wrote anything for, um, you know, for mass consumption. I was writing for myself. I was writing journals. I was writing, I was coming up with, um, poems. I was, I was writing. I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I hadn't um, figured out which direction I was going with that yet, but I worked for him for about a year, then segued out, then we, were, um, then we got married. And so it wasn't until years later that Power Rangers, he actually was able to sell it to, you know, Margaret Lush was the one who was his first champion. And so bringing that on the air was took him about nine years of pitching it everywhere before anyone would say yes to it. I mean, everyone thought he was loopy when he was showing them this show. The concept was not something everyone could get. You know, taking this kind of production value type footage from Japan and then um, adding live footage shot here with actors, you know, they would get here and editing these things together. So we'd have all these monster sequences that were already shot and we would have to shoot some new stuff, but not very much. We would, that was kind of the interesting part about the initial stages of writing those shows. You had to take what you had, the Japanese footage, and blend it with the new American footage and somehow make it all sort of work. <clears throat> but in terms of me being able to write on that show, Jaime and I talked about this stuff all the time, obviously, because we were partners in life. And it just, I just had an opportunity to see if I could try my hand at writing a script. There was a couple other scripts I'd written for some of the other cartoons that we did. So I said, okay, I'll try this too. And there was a lot of people, obviously, who were getting involved with writing. I didn't have anything to do with writing the Bible. Other people who did that. Because you know, this is actually, it's not all that easy to do, to jump in and write any kind of animated script, for example. Um, I think it's it's a very strong skill set you have to have to be able to do it. I was just lucky that I was able to work with other people who were doing it. And I did write about, I don't know, I think I wrote three or four episodes. So yeah, this is taking me way <laughs> back. But I'll just try to remember a little bit about the, like the food fight script, for example, <laughs> which is really kind of hilarious. And as a mom, I was thinking... God, what am I putting out there? Because this is this is like asking it's just like asking the kids, why don't you just go to the dinner table, take all your food and have fun with it and throw I mean it just seemed like a kind of an oddball thing. 
but it was it ended up being such a <laughs> such a goofy and fun uh, episode. But but we would have I'm trying to remember if it was like eight pages of hard writing and I don't remember the exact amounts actually at this point. But there was we had to look at all of the footage that we were that we were getting from Japan and see what we could um, capture out of that that we could use. And you have to, you know, the footage is just bizarre. I don't, I, you know, this was a big giant pig rampaging around. And of course we had our, you know, the, the, the fight sequences, as I said, were all produced already in Japan. But we needed to augment those with new footage here in the United States. So coming up with something that was some kind of a story based on the footage that was already shot, uh, you know, made us stretch our creative muscles a bit. But we did have to think what we needed to have the full story arc, and we had to have several stories going on. And there would be, you know, obviously team meetings where we were, whoever was the, you know, the head, the leader of all of the, all of the writers would be looking at the stuff. And <clears throat> we had, uh, deadlines that we had to meet and uh, what was so, sort of different for me though is since I was I was married to the king of the Power Rangers <laughs> we would sit in bed with I'd have my laptop and we'd have the scripts hanging around and we'd be we'd be going over this stuff together because at that time in the beginning Heim read every word he was involved in every every part of it so it was really it was a very it was a fun time for us because we were really working so closely on this project in the beginning it was quite fun I was the support system I mean Haim had the vision himself way before he saw something in this that to be honest with you most people couldn't see because you know he had it created in his mind way before it was on you know for 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 anyone to see and so he imagined it clearly and it, the rest of us were just kind of he's I'll, I'll follow him anywhere, you know? I mean, he has a great sense. He's a very entrepreneurial guy. And so I would believe him when he says, I believe in this. He was right. <laughs> I mean, he was really right. Haim was so dedicated to this show. Like I said, he read every script in the beginning. He would go out to this, he would go to the set. He would, um, he would participate in, Everything having to do with the merchandising, every, everything. I mean, literally from soup to nuts. I mean, is that that's a phrase I've heard. From the beginning to the end, Heim was immersed in it because he cared so much about it. And um, building that brand was very important. I mean, it was already a huge success in Japan. You know, I mean, Power Rangers for years had been there. And... But it was a brand new thing here in the United States. And he was convinced of its longevity way in the beginning. He was convinced of the legs that it would have. Um, he knew that little kids were going to love it. And it, it had a pretty, pretty strong pull on really little kids. And it went up almost to teens in the very beginning. You know, and now, like you said, there's people that... You know that have great memories of all those days and are still watching it still um, part of that culture